What's up, guys? How you doing? Pachata Rockstar here, doing another Star Realms replay, another educational game, and this one is very juicy. There's a lot to think about, a lot of intricacies in this game. Playing against O Twenty First here, and a very good player. He makes some really good, tough choices, and uh, both sides have to counter each other's thought process and you'll see that happen multiple times where i'll make a play and he'll have to change his strategy and he'll make a play and i'll change my strategy and then it's really neat i i think this game has a lot to um learn from and to take from it so let's get into it here we go turn one very first play get the orbital shuttle now orbital shuttle versus trade hauler versus swarmer versus explorer right all viable choices. Swarmer if you want to go um, aggressive and if you also want to control the trade row. For instance, if there were some really big cards out there, an argument could be made, especially if you had three trade, to go Swarmer, Orbital Shuttle. But you can go a couple of different routes. You can say, okay, I'm going to try to get trade so I can try to get those big cards. And as the first player, that's probably the thing you want to do since you're going to have access to those trade cards before your your second opponent, your opponent who's going second, excuse me, is going to. Going aggressive and controlling the trade row is also really good too. Like that's absolutely a very viable strategy. And I would have said do that if there was like some four or five cost blobs or just like big attack cards that were under six. Right? If you had like Blob Destroyer and um, Parasite or Pulverizer, you know, cards that you could reasonably expect to buy on subsequent turns without having to get more trade, um, then Swarmer is a good call, right? Because you can go aggro, you can control the trade row, and if big stuff comes out, you can use the Swarmer to get rid of them. So it's absolutely a thought. But. I think the best play here, though, is to go Orbital Shuttle. There's two bases out there. The likelihood of me acquiring bases and having Orbital Shuttle go off is much higher because of that. Trade Hauler is also a capped card in terms of its potential. It can only be so good, right? The most, the most Trade Hauler is doing is three trade, three heal. That's it. Orbital Shuttle, however, can give you three trade, a card draw, and four heal, potentially. So that's game-changing. Trade Hauler is almost never game-changing. If it's game-changing, it's because you bought an 8-drop, and then the 8-drop is the thing that changes the game, not the Trade Hauler. Um, so Orbital Shuttle is clearly the better play between Orbital Shuttle Trade Hauler, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best play given that there's a Swarmer out there. However, because we only have two trade, we're going to have to make a decision. We can only acquire one card this turn, and Orbital Shuttle is the best card to acquire. It gives us a chance to get Central Station. It gives us a chance to get Plasma Event. If nothing else, it can trade up for more Explorers if we really need it. Ultimately, it's the best card and the best decision. So now our opponent makes an odd play, and... It's not odd in terms of strategy. It's a little odd because I think it is, um, I think it's a little bit too ambitious given the board. So remember earlier we were talking about how buying the Swarmer would have been a better play if there was other blobs out there. He's buying Patrol Boat Swarmer. If you're going to do that, you're you're deciding to go ag aggressive, right? I have an orbital shuttle. Allowing me to get Central Station is a is a risk because orbital shuttle Central Station is a ridiculous pairing if I can get them together. So what he's deciding is by going patrol boat swarmer, he's saying I am the aggressor. The problem is, one, he's going second, so it's a little bit more difficult to be the aggressor. And two, he's allowing me to have a clear strategy. He's allowing me to have 
a base strategy. He's not forcing me to make a different decision. He's not forcing me to change my plans. Right? In fact, he's facilitating my plan. And it's okay to facilitate an opponent's plan if your plan is better. So if he was getting Convoy Bot Swarmer, I would like this way better. Because then he could be efficient, he could go aggro, and then he could kill me before I enact my base strategy. Patrol Boat Swarmer doesn't allow for increased efficiency. It's really just damage and a little bit of healing. It's a little bit slower, and I'm not sure I like that better than denying me Central Station, which is so powerful. Like... Central Station is pretty good for his deck. Like, what? Like I said, he's going second. So setting up a longer, more defensive strategy is perfectly viable. And is actually recommended, probably. And also, um, it's still good for his deck. It's not as aggressive, but committing to a long-term strategy... Not committing, per se, but, like, starting to go towards a long-term strategy is perfectly fine. Especially in the early game. But I like his decision in a sense that he has decided I'm going to be the aggressor. So he may not be putting me to tough decisions, but he is putting the pressure on me. Which means I'm going to have to get lucky with my draws in order to counter his aggression. So if things just kind of run out average, he could pick up a few more damage than me. Maybe I, I make some suboptimal damage purchases some buys that really aren't that good but are kind of the best out of shit draws and then he just you know has more damage and wins like that's absolutely a way this game could go so while i think this play is not the best play i like the thinking behind it i like the idea behind it um this is the sort of strategy that i would recommend to players that feel like they're playing a player who is better than them like, if you looked at somebody's level and they were, like, 40 levels ahead of you, just go aggro. Like, like I highly recommend it. Just go aggro. Because it blunts a lot of the things that they would do to um, hold sway over the game. So, I, I do like this play. I don't think it's a, it's a big mistake. But I do think it's not, um, not quite the best play. Okay, so because my opponent has clearly signaled that they're going aggressive, I think it's actually better for me now to counter that aggression. I think it's better for me now to actually go battle bot, battle pod, potentially trade hauler. Right, I've got five trade. So getting the central station here kind of commits me to a long-term strategy. And as the first player and going against somebody who has shown aggression, I think that's actually the worst play because it pigeonholes me into a base slash long-term strategy. And I don't necessarily want that. I think it's better for me to get some scrap, get a little bit of damage, not commit to a strategy right now, but to also blunt my opponent's very clear strategy. He's kind of turned his hand face up, as they say in poker. Where it's like, okay, he, he's shown what he's going to do. So because I know what he's going to do, now we can counter that. Oh, oh, oh. So. Another trade, another scrap card flips. So going aggressive absolutely is the play here. I think while I was playing this game, I was probably going to go battle bot central station anyway and kind of commit myself to that strategy but especially with the trade bot flipping now i can go a little more aggressive and like i said i want to blunt his strategy and i'm able to do that ah darn it i flipped a battle pod so that's unfortunate okay so my opponent now has an opportunity to get the central station he is but because i already put a read on him because i already assumed he was just gonna go aggressive I would have been relatively shocked if he picked up the central station. Maybe not shocked, like surprised, surprised. Um, him going battle pod orbital shuttle is what I think is probably the better play for him. Orbital shuttle keeps 
a potentially game-winning base strategy card away from me. Battle Pod continues his aggressive strategy. It gives him trade row control. Maybe he can scrap Central Station and keep it away from me later. Maybe he scraps Plasma Vent away from me later. These are all considerations. And getting Orbital Shuttle, like I said, keeps um, a, a potentially game-winning card away from me. So that's probably what he ends up doing, right? That, that, that seems like a good play. He gets Trade Hauler. This is a mistake. Again, Trade Hauler is a capped card. It can only be so good. Orbital Shuttle potentially is game-winning. If I can get a second Orbital Shuttle, then it will allow me to go base strategy or aggressive strategy, or both. By picking up, by not picking up Orbital Shuttle, it leaves my options wide open, and it actually condenses his options. Yep. So, whoa, whoa, what the hell? Sorry. Okay, here we go. My bad, guys. Misclicked. Okay, yeah. So we scrapped the Viper, and we're going to go Burrow or Orbital Shuttle here. Um, like I said, we are trying to keep the aggressive cards away from him. So allowing him to have Burrow would be devastating. So... We're just gonna keep it away. We're gonna we're gonna get the damage that we need to win this game, and then we're gonna pick up orbital shuttle because, like I said, we want to keep our options open and give us the ability to um, continue with a base strategy or continue with an aggressive strategy. But for the most part, you, you notice what we're doing. We're just countering his strategy, right? We're just we're taking cards away from him. Um, very much a hate buy kind of strategy that we're enacting right now. Yep. And so I would anticipate, uh, especially because my opponent does not have six trade here, I would anticipate him scrapping either Plasma Vent or Central Station and then picking up Blob Destroyer. So he ends up scrapping Plasma Vent. Uh, I think this is the correct play. Plasma Vent is a much more immediate threat, it's a much more aggressive threat. And because I have two orbital shuttles, the likelihood of me getting it is pretty high. Because um, I could easily just go orbital shuttle, two, you know, orbital shuttle, three scouts, and a battle pod. Orbital shuttle, three scouts, and a burrower. And it'd be pretty easy for me to make that combo happen. And that combo would be devastating. So I actually like him getting rid of. Um, getting rid of the plasma vent here I, th I think this is actually a really good decision and especially if he is able to get central station or blob destroyer behind that that would be really great for him but we'll see what happens we'll see what he has Ooh, so this is unfortunate he gets actually pretty unlucky to not have four trade here um so i think the correct play here is to get nothing. He has enough trade. There's nothing out here that's that expensive. But by buying Trade Hauler and potentially buying Federation Shuttle, you're committing yourself, not committing yourself, but you're watering down your deck and you're getting trade and healing when you're not really threatened. Like, I have some aggression. But I don't think he should feel like he is, um, he's under a lot of pressure right now. You know, we have an equal amount of damage. I'm ahead on the scrap, but adding to the inefficiency of your deck doesn't seem to help. Especially when you're adding to the inefficiency and you're not able to pick up an 8-drop or a 7-drop that would swing the game back in your favor all on its own. Because it's, it's not out there. I would like this play more if this Command Center or this Blob Destroyer 
was a command ship or a brain world or a dreadnought something where it's like okay if i can get that in you know one or two more turns that's gonna swing the game back around for me so i think i think this is a mistake and i'm not sure uh, but I think this is one of those instances, too, where I'm sort of forcing him into tough decisions. Where it's like, ooh, should I be worried about getting aggroed now? He's bought a lot of greens. Uh, you know? And maybe I should start worrying about my life total now. And so that's what I think he's thinking. I think he's thinking I need to start worrying a little bit about my life total. I need to also get a little bit more trade. So maybe I have some more flexibility later on. And uh, this is what I mean when I say you want to put your opponent into tough spots. You know? So. We absolutely are going to pick up that blob fighter because that's awesome. And then I make a mistake here. Uh, no, excuse me. I don't. Never mind. Scrapping Central Station is correct. He probably doesn't have enough to get Central Office at this point. Maybe if he had, if he gets that second trade hauler, he'd have to get pretty lucky. He'd have to go trade hauler and all scouts to get the Central Office. Uh, but the reason I get rid of the Central Station is because he's going super blue. And he could easily start to enact a base strategy of his own. And I don't want him to do that. But I think another argument could be made to get rid of Blob Destroyer maybe try to keep the aggro away from him like like basically throttle the aggro so i'm the only one that has it but central station is a bigger threat to me oh wow so then he does have seven see so that's unfortunate that's unfortunate it, it, that's a little unlucky but it's, i'm okay with it it's central station is not the game breaking card that he was looking for right like it is a seven drop remember how we we're talking about how like oh well these other plays are more justified if he has a seven drop or if he's targeting a seven drop that's not the scary seven drop game winning seven drop um that i was referring to so i'm okay with him having that um but here's another weird play or i make a mistake i scrap the command center why Scrapping the trading post would have been better since he's going mostly blues. Scrapping the blob destroyer would have been better because he does have some aggression and some blobs and stuff. And keeping that away from him would have been better. Scrapping the moonworm hatchling would have been good because that would allow keep a base destroyer away from him and open up bases for me. But I scrapped the command center? Why? What does it do? I don't even know what I was thinking there and... Maybe it was a misclick? I don't know. We'll see. But the correct play here, though, absolutely, is to not scrap, get the Oracle, and control scrap. That's the plan, right? I'm trying to control the scrap. The more... Um, the more I can keep scrap away from him, the better. I want to be the one in control of efficiency, and hopefully that will lead to him having some bad turns. Having some seven trade, no damage, oops, oops, I get my bases, and now he can't get through them, and I have two bases for two turns kind of thing. So, this is really nice. It sucks that I don't get to scrap, but... In this case, I think it's okay because I'm picking up a base, which also scraps. What, is, what does he scrap here? He scraps the frigate. That's a little odd. Um, if he's planning on getting the battle bot, I think it's fine. If he's planning on getting the blob destroyer, I think that's probably fine. You know, but... I think I would have scrapped the Moonroom Hatchling or the Trading Post. Just because, again, those are the things that are going for my strategy here. Ooh. Ooh. And now he top decks Blob Destroyer. Nice. I like this play. Yeah, I like this play a lot. It sucks that he's not getting a scrap. Um, 
but not getting this scrap is kind of okay because he is still you know two three turns away from actually drawing it uh, you know, he may get one or two scraps out of it, maybe, but it's not going to be the, um, I don't know if it's going to really change his fortunes at this point. Uh, really, the way for him to win is to keep going aggressive like he's been doing, and top decking Blob Destroyer is the best way to do that. I'm already down to 35, you know. This is a good play, very good play, good decision. I like what he's doing here. So we get lucky because we have just enough damage to kill Central uh, Central Office here. And uh, we're going to have four trade once we scrap. So theoretically, I could have kept that and gone one, one, three, or one, one, three, or one and four. But me getting Moonworm Hatchling, eh, it's not necessarily that important. I kind of want to keep my nose to the grindstone. I want to get the battle bot. And honestly, one more base. Giving me a chance to enact base strategy too. Probably going to go trading post battle bot here. I think that's that's the best play. You know, it keeps our options open. Yep. There we go. All right, that's the plan. We've got two orbital shuttles. We've got two bases. We're scrapping down. We've got damage. we got a good deck going now. Right? We just need one more cycle, and our deck's going to be freaking powerful, man. So we got to live. Hopefully we still live. Hopefully we live till then. But assuming if if we do, we're going we're gonna to have some powerful turns coming up. Oh, wow. Look at this. Uh, I think scrapping the Warpgate Cruiser would have been a little better, or scrapping the Moonroom Hatchling would have been a little better. Um, than the farm ship. But once the hammerhead comes out and you can't afford it, scrapping the hammerhead is absolutely the best play because that card is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and he picks up Swarmer. Good, good. These are all good plays, right? He, he realizes now, I'm kind of on the ropes a little bit, right? Like, if I can get my deck to perform, my deck is going to be ridiculous. But if he kills me before then, it's not going to matter. And so, getting Swarmer, getting more greens, staying aggressive, absolutely the right play. So, I'm going to pick up this base here. Now, you notice I have enough to get Warpgate Cruiser. But, Recycling Station is going to be huge for my deck, right? Throwing away two shit cards, getting two draws, being able to scrap those discards. Huge, 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 huge. This card could not come at a better time absolutely this is an engine let's go okay and we don't want to add any more inefficiencies to our deck we forego buying anything yep this is good this is good and so now because our life total is low we have to we have to now commit to a defensive strategy right we have to commit to a base strategy now and that's what we're doing and that's what the last two turns were all about right was just noticing Okay, he, he has he has locked into a aggro strategy. We need to lock into a base defense strategy in order to counter it. Yeah, and he gets Warpgate Cruiser. So, I mean, like, obviously this is, this is a good buy. I think maybe I would have liked buying Space Station better to sort of keep, a, keep another base away from me, but this is an excellent card. Don't get me wrong. He's going to heal up for six. But you see what I mean about the capped potential? Like, this, these cards can only be so good. And when you draw them together, like, yeah, it lets you buy something big, but this is kind of a wasted turn. And I luck out in top deck recycling station, so now I'm going to get set up here. Wow, look at this turn. Okay, so super lucky to draw bases, right? Super lucky to get two scraps out of this turn. I don't deal a lot of damage, but all of a sudden my life total has gone from 23 to 36. And now I'm sitting pretty. And he just cycled, so all of his scouts are available. And remember, because he has not scrapped at all, he might have a shit turn here. 
This is really lucky in terms of timing for us. And there it is. There it is. He has a shit turn. And it's time to fucking drop the hammer on him now. And here's where those orbital shuttles come into play, right? I've got two draws here with the recycling station. I've got a third draw with burrower battle pod. I've got a fourth draw with orbital shuttle. I know my other orbital shuttle is still in there. I'm about to heal up like crazy and potentially have a big damage turn too. Oh, wow. Look at this. Swarm cluster comes out. Boom. Six, seven, eight. There it is. There's eight. I get the swarm cluster. I can still scrap a scout. Wow. Look at this turn. Holy shit. And we get rid of Leviathan, which would have been a win con for him. Damn. And then he has a turn that's okay. But he leaves the base up, and I drew another orbital shuttle, and I drew Pearl. This might be game. This might be game. All of a sudden. Right? Oh, wow. 17, 22. Boom. GG. And there it is. There it is. Like, you see that? I love all the little intricacies in this game. I love all the little small changes, small decisions that happen in this game. Fantastic, right? And, and very good plays on his side. I think really good plays on my side, but a little bit of unluckiness on his side. A little bit of luck on my side. Uh, one or two mistakes on his side. One or two mistakes on my side, but that weren't as impactful. That's the game, you know? I win this game 55% of the time. He wins the game 45% of the time, right? But that 10%, you know, it means it's a lot. It's a big difference. And I think he, he made a lot of good plays, but we just made a few better ones, and we got really lucky in two key spots where we needed it. That's it, you know? A lot of times that's the difference in a game of Star Realms, so... Yeah. Thanks, guys, for being here. I hope this uh, helped you think a little deeper about stuff, and uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Appreciate it. See you later.